In the series so far, we've covered over 100 secrets from the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, and today, as per usual, we're exploring a further 15. Welcome to the video, this is episode 8 and you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. Some of the things we'll be looking at today may include alternate interactions, hidden characters, continuity and scenes that you may have missed for example. Some you may already know or this all may be new to you and after watching, if there are any you're aware of that you feel other players may have missed, please let us know in the comment section below. As with the previous, each one will be separated into its own chapter, so if you're watching one that you're already aware of, you have the easy option to skip to the following, and please be aware there will be spoilers ahead for those yet to complete the main story. If you enjoy the video, you all know what to do, and now let's get in to what we came here to see. 15 Secrets Still Unseen by Some Players Part 8 In Chapter 4 of the title, the gang are invited to a party at the mayor's house in the mission titled A Gilded Cage. After a short conversation on the balcony with Angelo Bronte, Dutch orders Arthur, Bill and Hosea to mingle with the other guests at the party and steal nothing unless it's information. There are multiple interactions to be had with both the guests and employees and one of these includes the milliner, Algernon Wasp. Upon approaching the gentleman, he will begin to choke on a piece of food, prompting Arthur to save him. You okay? Oh my lord! What some players may have missed is the interaction that occurs if you leave him to his own devices. You okay? Oh my lord! The pesky nut! What a way to go, eh? <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Algernon Boss. Hello, Rupert O'Keefe. Hello, hello, Mr. Keefe. Good lord, did you see that poor fellow? Everyone just standing there while he choked to death. He's fine, isn't he? Well, yes, thanks to me. Well, maybe the mayor will give you a medal. There's no need to be so facetious. In the epilogue of the title, specifically part two, Uncle informs John that he thinks he may have found the whereabouts of their former fellow gang member, Charles Smith, and that he's bare knuckled fighting somewhere in saint -Denis. After finding him, we learn that he's been throwing fights for a few dollars under the order of the city's latest criminal tycoon, Guido Martelli. Deciding instead to pummel and defeat his opponent, Charles has now made an enemy of Martelli and he and John must escape Saint Denis in a hurry. After completing the final mission of the game, if John is to visit Doyle's Tavern in the slums of the same city, he may be approached by a working lady called Daisy. Offering her services to John, if the player chooses to accept, they will be led into a back alleyway where the following interaction occurs. Come on, honey. Not much further. And here we are. Good girl. That's him, all right. Ain't nothing personal. You shouldn't have come back to San Denis. After what you pulled at the fight, you got a whole lot of nerve showing up around here. We gonna deal with you? Then we find that Charles. Mind just embody your own Guido Martelli is not a man who forgets. For the next one, I want to show you guys a hidden weapon that I think some may not have spotted. To the west of Ansberg, players can find the home of one Martha, marked on the map as Martha Swain. I've covered the tale of the deceased Martha inside and her husband Garfield previously, but what I want to show you is just outside of the home, embedded in a tree stump. It's here players can find the Rusted Hunter Hatchet. This unique weapon can be used as a throwable, but beware if you wish to keep the item after using it, you must remember to retrieve it. Hunting gators is a favoured pastime for the locals of the south, but for those who are inexperienced when it comes to the reptilians, 
things can prove fatal. Players entering the regions of the bayou may have missed something underneath one of the bridges crossing the Kamasar River. It's here that you can find the remains of both a man and an alligator. Investigating a little more closely, we are able to somewhat piece together the events that led to the demise of both. Next to the man is a chest, a shovel and a dirt mount. Opening the chest will reveal that he was attempting to hide away his money and judging by his left foot being completely missing, it would seem that the gator had snuck up on the unsuspecting foe before taking a bite. With the shovel, the man would fight back, eventually killing the attacker, but ultimately passed away himself from his injuries. In chapter 2 of the game, Arthur will reunite with his former love interest, Mary Gillis, who wastes no time in asking him for assistance. If Arthur chooses to aid the lady, he will track down her brother Jamie, who's joined up with a cult known as the Chelonians. There's a secret scene that I've shown in a previous video, which happens when you kill the Chelonian leader, but what some players may have missed occurs years later in 1907, during the epilogue of the game. To trigger what I'll be showing shortly, John must first visit saint -Denis and have a conversation with one Anders Helgerson. The world is coming to an end. I am so happy. A new master has arrived and he is leading those who know to safety. I plan on joining him myself. Oh, he's in the hills near Granite Pass. It's not too late. I've been trying to warn everyone, but no one will listen. Heading to the Grizzlies East, not too far from Moonstone Pond, John can find the campsite of the Chelonians, where the following will take place, even with a comical ending, if you choose to do so. We shall be saved! Are you lost, friend? Follow me, sir! Follow me! Together, we can be safe! Follow me! With this shell, I am, I am safe from, from all things. things. We shall not be defeated. We shall be saved. Follow me and be saved. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me to Chelonia! In the very first video of this series, I covered the meteorite house that players can find in Roanoke Valley. If the player chooses to stroll through the nearby woods at around 2am and look towards the night sky, there's a chance that they can view an array of shooting stars. For those who wish to experience everything they potentially can in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, this is a must. In the prologue of the game, there's a mission which you'll all know titles Who the Hell is Leviticus Cornwall? A large portion of the Vandalin gang attempt to pull off a train heist, working with the information stolen from the rivaling Old Driscoll gang. During the robbery, as Arthur and Lenny battle their way to the front of the automotive, with the intentions of stopping the train, there's a very small change that can be triggered if you choose to do things a little differently. The game will prompt the player to rush to the front and pull on the brakes, but if you decide to hang back, an alternate scene will occur where Lenny will take point and do this for you. Visiting the town of Valentine, players may sometimes trigger an NPC interaction where a working lady will beckon them over next to the Smithfield Saloon, desperately claiming she needs assistance. Choosing to help her and after disposing of the body for the lady with the assistance of the local pigs, the game then tells you to return to the scene where you'll receive payment for your troubles. But what some may have missed is that just before this, even after feeding the man to the pigs, 
you can still inform the sheriff of the lady's crime, who will then quickly dash off to make the arrest. No, no, you have to understand! This man was going to kill me! He's a monster! Yeah, I'm sure all of you are little monsters. Man. Anyone ever tell you that you ain't well? No, no, no! Not as nice as the saloon bed, but it ain't covered in blood. That's something. Well, thank you very much, partner. Killer prostitute is a problem Valentine can do without. Up next, we are traveling down south to Hennigan's death. It's here, near a cliff edge, that players can both find and interact with a stranger who strangely isn't marked on the map. This man is known as the Sun Worshipper. Partner? Hey, what you doing, friend? Wandering? Me too! <laughs> Me too! What you wandering for? Uh, no idea. Man, me too! Me too! Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you around. Enjoy the sun. It's the one true god, you know. Helios. Nothing else matters. All else is lies! This character can be interacted with for a total of 12 times, and if you wish to see it in its entirety, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll happily put it all together for you. In Chapter 5 of the game, after the failed robbery of the National Bank in Saint-Denis, a few members of the gang find themselves washed up on the island of Guama. The reunion is cut short when they are ambushed by a local militia, led by one Levy Simon, who happens to run the sugar plantation on the island. When questioned about their identity, Dutch Vanderland's responds with the following. Who are you? Senor, por favor, we are no one. What's your name? Aiden O'Malley. Is that so? What are you doing, Mr. O'Malley? Surviving. What some players may not have realized is that the name given is actually a reference to a previous title. This is a nod to Rockstar's 2008 title, Grand Theft Auto 4, where there's a minor character of the same name. The next one is a small detail, but one that some may not have noticed nonetheless. In the epilogue of the title, everyone's favorite uncle has a new companion, Nell 4, and closely inspecting the horse, players will notice that it actually has itself some facial hair. During the days of the Vandalin gang, the arbiter, Susan Grimshaw, ran a tight ship and always made sure that the members kept themselves clean. Now Uncle never seemed one for hygiene, so it's possible that in the epilogue he had let both himself and his Steve go. Either that, or it could be just an inside joke by Rockstar, making the animal look somewhat similar to the rider. The town of Valentine is kept under control by Sheriff Malloy, but behind the scenes, it appears that the local lawman has trouble keeping control of himself. During the bounty hunter mission, where Arthur tracks down Benedict Albright upon his return to Valentine with the captive, he seems to have interrupted an intimate conversation between Sheriff Malloy and local resident Moira Calthorpe, leading to suspicion of an affair. For players who choose, at their own risk, to hogtie the sheriff and fumble through his belongings, they will find a letter from Mrs. Calthorpe addressed to the lawman. I'll leave it on screen for a moment if you wish to pause the video and read. Following the final mission of the game, after the credit roll, we are introduced to a heartwarming scene at Beecher's Hope, which is a conversation between newlyweds Abigail and John Marston, discussing their future together. What some may not have noticed takes us back to the original Red Dead Redemption. The spot where the pair of us stood talking about their future is the very location where both would be buried within just a few years. John in 1911 and Abigail in 1914. As we enter chapter 2 of the title, we are quickly introduced 
to the town of Valentine, and for players in need of a remedy, they can visit the local doctor to get patched up. The doctor is quite the gossip, and if you spend enough time in his store, you'll learn a little about this local town. Whilst I was there, there was something he mentioned which piqued interest. You know, Valentine's seen its fair share of famous gunslingers. My cousin Jim got into some scrapes here back in the day. Stepping outside of the store, we can see on the proprietor sign that the doctor is named Ben Calloway, meaning that the cousin he is referring to is none other than Jim Boy Calloway, who we are introduced to just across the street, half soaked in Keen's saloon, triggering the side quest, the noblest of men and a woman. At the top of Mount Hagen is a small holding, which would later be used as a hideout for Micah's gang in the epilogue. It's at an outhouse in this area that players can find the remains of a man who seems apparent to have frozen to death. Closely inspecting the man will reveal that he suffered a severe injury to his right leg and has used a temporary splint to hold it in place, whilst also using a crutch to get around on. Nothing more is known about the man and why this outhouse was his final resting place, but an educated guess would tell us that this was possibly his home before passing. Although, he also could have potentially set himself up for the night at this location temporarily, but didn't make it to the morning. Do you have any theories regarding this man and his fate? I hope you enjoyed today's video, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications and share with friends and family or anyone you may feel would be interested in content such as this. Do you know of any secrets that you think some players may not be aware of? Be sure to share below in the comment section. Follow me over on Instagram for updates on upcoming videos and latest information on the channel. You'll find it both on screen and linked below in the video description. Thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll see you in part 9.